Welcome to Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. While I have your attention, I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I would appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. This is a somewhat unexpected second part of my video, 3D printing a gyro jet, the first part of which is linked to below. I'm making this because a rather viewer made this comment. He said, I don't think 3D printing gyro jet ammo, the micro jets, is feasible. The reason is that 3D printers work by melting plastic at relatively low temperatures, around 200 degrees Celsius or 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Solid rocket propellant burns much faster and hotter. S is solid rocket motors, which are a good example since these are commercially available for model rocketry hobbyists, have an exhaust temperature of about 2400, I'm sorry, 1400 degrees Celsius or 2552 degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously there's a problem since Solid rocket motors of the kinds used with the original microjets would burn about seven times hotter than the temperature necessary to melt a 3D printed microjet. Now, a possible solution was also provided by the same viewer who said there is a new generation of 3D printers such as the Metal X. The positive is that they can print a variety of metals, including titanium, and would bring the precision and reproducibility need for to the exhaust ports. The unknown is if the 3D printed metals have the same heat tolerance as machined metal. The very negative is that these pre 3D printers are often very expensive at running $100,000 or more. So, I don't personally know how to solve the, any of the issues that might arise with a 3D printed jet or jet. However, I readily admit that I am simply an ideas man on this. I have no access to 3D printers, nor the CAD training to even start the process, nor much knowledge of rocketry. I can only pass the microjet issues to engineers who might be brighter than I. But as an idea, I have to wonder if it might not be possible to make melting an integral part of the microjet. Perhaps it could be designed specifically intended to partially melt away during flight. Again, I don't know the answer to this, uh, if there is in fact even an answer. But the other issue is, I don't think you can use solid fuel from model rocketry, because if you did, that would simply cause government to outlaw model rocketry. I don't really know what other fuel would be appropriate. Again, I have to pass this off to engineers. My main thrust in throwing this idea out there is to make food for thought for those who actually know how to know, do such things. And I know how engineers tend to think. Once they get a problem in their heads, it's hard for them to shake it until they've worked out an answer. They're puzzle solvers who get a kick out of figuring out intricate things. But having been in IT for 40 years, I've observed firsthand some of the really amazing things that open collaboration can produce. This includes the Linux operating system, OBS Studio, Lix, OpenOffice Draw, Inkscape, and the GIMP, which are the primary tools. In fact, they're really the only tools that I use to make this show. Now, the main idea I have here for solving any given problem is open source collaboration. Now, open source collaboration produced all of the tools that I mentioned above. And while software is obviously different from hardware, the same principles and tools are now being applied to various things in the hardware space. So in the case of a 3D printed open source gyro jet, some of the tools that you usually use for open source hard software couldn't be used. One couldn't use GitHub nor a publicly available wiki to which people are contributing. Uh, because to do so would be to expose the developer and make he or she subject to potential prosecution. So I would suggest this. Release any and all designs, functional or not, and marked heavily so if they're not functional so some idiot doesn't put them together and try it, 
via BitTorrent. And I have a link below to the piratebay.org, and that is one of the places that you can use to kind of publicize that this is out there. This would allow anyone worldwide to download the plans and improve them. And you have to le release all your designs under the standard GNU public license. And there's a link in my description box below for an uh, article about that on Wikipedia. Because this would allow free and open modifications to any and all designs. And I'm quite certain that after several cycles of engineers grabbing plans, modifying them, and then re-releasing them to other engineers, I am quite sure that you would come up with a very useful weapon and probably something far more advanced than you ever would have thought of in the first place. I just look at what open source has created. We live in an open source world now. So with engineers doing open source things, I think we'll do very well indeed. In fact, I've already had a user, a viewer rather, who suggested making the firing mechanism, the gyrojet, electrical rather than mechanical. And, and this would free up a whole bunch of space right above the trigger. Now, I have created a page on my website that I hope will facilitate development. There's little that's really new there, but it's just a big clearinghouse for gyrojet information taken from all over the web. And there is a link to that in my description box as well. Now on the site, you will find an array of pictures that I have accumulated over the years. This gun, as poor as it performed, has always been one of my guilty pleasures. It includes pictures of the pistol, the carbine, the micro jets, um, designs, various designs people have made up, and the original patents. There are a number of videos. In fact, there's an entire YouTube playlist of videos regarding the gyrojet that's embedded in one of the pages. There's information on any potential microjet tips, not tips about the microjet, but the tips you put on the microjet, which I'll talk about in a moment. There are links to other websites, a couple of which are really invaluable. There's a great website by a guy who wrote a book about this, and boy, does he have technical diagrams in it. And there are also links to social media groups. Now, hopefully, this will spark some creative ideas, and if you have some that can be shared publicly, feel free to tell me, and I will incorporate them into my pages. Now, mention tips. One should always think outside the box when dealing with a problem like this, something that was hammered home to me just last night. I got into an interesting conversation with a firearms enthusiast who pointed me to a couple of videos by the YouTuber The Backyard Scientist. I had already been aware of him and had watched some of his videos, but these were particularly interesting because he had experimented with filling in the tips of hollow point bullets with liquid metals like sodium and potassium as well as a combination of both. And there are links to both of these videos where he does this in my description box below. And I bring this up <laughs> because sodium and potassium are extremely reactive with water, explosively so in fact. Well, backyard scientists' tests do conclude pretty conclusively that, you know, tipping your bullets with this will reduce penetration the explosive potential is really rather enormous. And since human beings are somewhere between 50 to 65 percent water, a sodium or potassium tipped microjet would cause even a grazing wound to become explosive. So again, this is all just food for thought and an example of thinking outside the box. Because remember, one should always think outside the box unless it's the TARDIS, because the TARDIS is bigger on the inside of the box. So that is all that I have to say about that. I would love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. And that's all the time that we have today, so thank you for watching this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYO Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion, and I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.